hey guys we are in our free online coaching classes for the jam examination and this video will be the lecture 7 on this series and the topic which i will try to cover in this video is the classification of fault and the book which i referred for this topic is the structural geology by buildings and this heading is in the fourth third topic that is the structural geology so let us get into the heading so what is a fault actually a fault is defined as the fracture along which the blocks of rock have been displaced relative to each other and remember this planar discontinuity originated by the tectonic forces acting regionally and the essential feature is the differential movement parallel to the surface of the fracture remember if there is no any uh, parallel movement to the structure of uh, parallel movement to the surface of the fracture then it is not a fault it is called as the joints so this is the difference between joints and faults in faults it is essentially the displacement that is parallel to the surface of the fracture is required there may be a few inches the displacement may be sometimes few inches to extend of up to tens of miles and how it is formed the fault results from the tensional as well as the compressional forces and these are the uh, animation for that you can see due to compression there is a formation of fault as well you can see here the due to the extensional forces also there is a formation of fault even there are also other reasons for the formation of fault that we will see in the classification of fault in the later slides okay so to begin with the first one is the parts of fault the following are the parts of fault. The first one is the fault plane. Actually, the fractural surface along which the relative movement has been taken place is called the fault plane. So, once this uh, rock was continuous and due to uh, faulting, what happens? This portion has been uh, drawn down, thrown down along a plane, and this plane is referred as the fault plane. <coughs> The second heading is the, the head. The head is the fault. A fault is the angle of inclination of fault plane that is measured from the vertical. So this is the fault plane, right? So if you are measuring this inclination of the fault plane from the vertical line, then this angle of inclination is called as the head. So this is what they had mentioned here. So the head is the measure of angle of inclination of the fault plane that should be measured from vertical and you know what is dip the dip is the measurement of inclination of the fault plane that is from the horizontal so this is the horizontal line and if you are measuring the angle of inclination of the dip that is a fault dip then it is called as the dip and remember there is a relation between dip head and dip that is head plus dip will be 90 degree as the head and dip will form a right angle triangle so wherever the fault plane will be whether it is low angle fault or high angle fault the relation between the head and dip is always 90 degree okay then the third fourth heading is that the vert throw that is the vertical component of displacement is called as the throw that is this is the throw so once it was earlier together and due to the fault and due to the displacement it has been thrown down right so this is called as the throw the side on which the strata appears to have moved down is called as the down throw side so this side which is which is appearing that it has been moved down so it is called as the down throw side and when you are seeing this side if you are comparing from this side this feels like this side has been thrown up so this side is called as the up thrown side so throw is the vertical component of displacement and the block which appears to move down that is called as the down throw side and the block that is appeared to move up that is called the up thrown side and the next heading is the heave the heave is the horizontal component of displacement okay so remember when there is a vertical fault you cannot look for the heave because everything will be thrown then the next one is the net slip that is the total displacement that is measured along the fault so i will show you the three things so once these bits were together like this so the vertical displacement from here to here is measured as the head and this point has been horizontally shifted from here to here so this distance is measured as heave and you know that the net slip that is the displacement that is measured along the fault plane so this is the fault plane so whatever the displacement that is measured in this line that is considered as the net slip 
remember there is relation between he throw and its slip because this is your <coughs> throw and this is sorry and this is your heave this forms a right angle triangle so according to the pythagoras theorem you remember the net slip square that is this line this is the net slip square that is you call as hypotenuse is equal to heave square plus throw square so in a question uh, if they are asking for the find out the net slip and they are given the heave and throw you can simply calculate the net slip using this formula or you can also uh, play, uh, change the places and can find also heave and throw right so this is how you can calculate these things and the next one is the hanging wall so remember the hanging wall is one that is present below the fault plane so this is the fault plane right so here this is the fault plane right so the hanging wall is one which is present above the fault plane is called the hanging which is just hanging there so this is called the hanging wall whereas the full foot wall is one which is just present below the fault plane so this portion is called the foot wall in this image this portion is called the foot wall which is present below the fault plane and this portion is hanging wall which is present above the fault plane and once again remember where the fault is of vertical then there is no any foot wall and hanging wall okay so if the fault plane is inclined you can go for the foot wall and hanging wall if the fault plane is vertical you cannot say there is a foot wall and hanging wall remember this point this foot wall and hanging wall is only for the inclined fault plane so let us get into the classification of fault the faults has been classified into two that is grouped into two that is genetic classification as well as geometric classification the first one is the genetic classification in which there are three classes the first class in genetic classification is based on the apparent movement of the fault block and the second class is based on the forces that is responsible for the formation of the fault and the third classification is based on the groups of fault together and in geometric classification also there are three classes the first one is based on the relation between the strike of the fault and the attitude of the strata and the second classification is based on the degree of dip of the fault plane and the third classification is based on the relation between the direction of slip and the attitude of the fault plane itself so these are the 3 plus 3 6 classification on the fault we will see one after the other so let us get into the first one that is the genetic classification this class is based on the apparent movement of opposite blocks of the fault plane so there is a normal fault in which the hanging walls appear to have moved down when related to the foot wall and this is also called as the gravity fault so this is the fault plane right so the fault and uh, the block which is lying below the fault plane is called as the foot wall and the block that is lying above the fault plane is called as the hanging wall in which they are mentioned the hanging wall appear to live that is moved downwards so the hanging wall that is moving downwards hence it is called as the normal fault it is also called as the gravity fault so this is just opposite for the normal fault that is the reverse fault in which the hanging wall appears to have moved upwards so this is a fault plane so these are the two this is the block sorry rock uh, section that is uh, this portion has been thrown uh, moved this, this side right so this is the fault plane so this is your hanging wall and this is your foot wall so this hanging wall is appeared to move upward so hence it is called as a reverse fault so this is a reverse fault where the hanging wall moves up and here is the normal fault where the hanging wall moves down and the next class is based on the forces that is responsible for the formation of fault there are four classification that is the tensional fault compressional fault transcurrent fault and the pivotal fault so the tensional fault is formed by the tensional forces that is due to extension which pulls the earth crust apart and this indicates the lengthening of the earth crust so due to the pulling apart the fault is created that is called as the tensional fault whereas the compressional fault is just reverse of the tensional fault in which the compressional forces is acting and that produces the fault and this indicates the shortening of the earth crust and the third one is the transcurrent fault uh, which is actually formed due to the uh, lateral thrust or the tear or the wrench fault and this is called the wrench fault and it exhibits mainly horizontal movement 
so there is no any compression or tension there is no any overlapping or extension here there is only horizontal movement and the fourth one is the pivotal fault which is caused by the rotational ax, uh, rotational stress and this fault is called as the scissor fault that is belong to this group and this movement is mainly rotational so the tensional fault is formed by the tensional force that is due to extension where the earth crust is lengthened whereas the compressional fault is one where the earth crust is compressed there is shortening of the earth crust the transcurrent fault is the lateral movement of rock blocks and the pivotal fault is the rotational movement of the fault blocks and the third case that is the fault <coughs> grouped according to the group of faults right there are actually seven faults are there we will try to group them for the better understanding so the first thing is the parallel fault and the step fault so the parallel fault is a series of fault that have same strike and dip and are called the parallel fault and such fault run parallel to one another and uh, all all the head and at the same direction with same angle so this is a parallel fault image <coughs> where the all the all are heading in the same direction <coughs> and the step fault is one where the which is actually just like a parallel fault but the main difference is that the displacement is increasing when you move further right so this is a parallel fault where the displacements are same all over in the step fault the displacement is increasing as we move further right and the next is the graben a long and narrow fault trough bounded by parallel high angle faults so this is a graben this structure is produced when two parallel normal fault head towards each other and the rock bed between them throw down under the influence of gravity and forming the topographic loop so this is how a graben fault is formed remember the point that the they are parallel normal fault that is heading towards each other but when you are seeing the host you can see these are the normal faults that is heading away from each other and here it is forming the topographic low and here it forms the topographic high so this is a graben which is a topographic low and this is a host which is a topographic high and here if you see they are heading towards each other and here you can see they are heading away from each other is that clear and the next thing is that peripheral fault and the radial fault the peripheral fault is the curved fault which have nearly circular or arc like outcrop on a level ground or called the peripheral fault whereas the radial fault is one where the radial pattern of the fault is shown right in the plain ground you can see that the faults are radiating from a central point so this is called the radial fault and this fault is called the peripheral fault and the last one is the anaclone fault in the genetic classification in this the relative short fault which overlaps each other so the overlapping of fault will leads to the anaclone fault and these are the few images for the anaclone fault <coughs> sorry let's get into the geometric classification the first classification is based on the relation between the strike of the fault and the attitude of the strata and remember this classification is only for the stratified formation because uh, when they are talking about the attitude of strata the strata should have strike and dip so mostly the bedded forms will have the strike and dip right the first case is that the dip fault the fault in which the fault plane strikes parallel to the dip direction of the beds that involves faulting is called the dip fault so you can see that the fault plane <coughs> sorry and the fault plane strike is parallel to the dip direction of the bedding so you can see the bedding plane's dip direction is this and the fault plane strike direction will be like this so both are parallel and this forms the dip fault the next one is the strike fault in which the fault plane strike parallel to the strike direction of the beds so for the bedding plane you can see this is the strike direction and for the fault plane you can see this is the strike direction when the bedding plane strike as well as the fault plane strike together that is called the strike fault then there is a bedding fault in which the fault plane strike is parallel to the bedding plane itself then it is called as the bedding fault you can see this is the bedding plane and this bedding plane is parallel to the fault strike then it is called the bedding fault if the fault plane strike doesn't match with the strike or dip or bedding plane then it is called the oblique fault remember 
this classification is based on the fault plane strike if the fault plane strike is parallel to the dip of the formation <laughs> then it is called the dip fault if the fault plane strike is parallel to the strike of the formation then it is called the strike fault if the fault plane strike is parallel to the bedding plane of the formation then it is called the bedding fault if the fault plane doesn't match with any other things then it is called the oblique fault okay this is the classification one and the next one is the classification two in which the classification is based on the degree of dip of the fault so there are two types the first one is the high angle fault and the second one is the low angle fault the high angle fault or the fault in which the fault plane dips greater than 45 degree so you can see this where the fault plane is dipping more than 45 degree then it is called as the high angle fault so you have to measure the dip of the fault plane if it is more than 45 then it is high angle fault if it is less than 45 then it is called the low angle fault and in general the they form less than 45 degree right so the classification 3 is based on the relation between the direction of slip and the attitude of the fault plane itself in this classification there are three categories that is the strike slip fault then the dip slip fault then the oblique slip fault so the very first thing is the strike slip fault in which the strike slip fault the movement is essentially horizontal along the strike of the fault plane so you can see the fault plane strike is here and the movement is parallel to the strike of the fault plane then it is called the strike slip fault remember you have seen the strike fault in which the fault plane strike matches with the bedding plane strike so that is the different classification that is in the class 1 of the geometric classification this is the class 3 remember in this case the strike slip fault the movement is essentially horizontal so the term slip indicates the movement of the rock blocks so whenever there is a term slip you should remember the classification is based on the displacement so the strike slip fault indicates the horizontal movement of the fault the next one is the dip slip fault in which the fault plane displacement is vertical that you can see here the displacement is parallel to the dip of the fault plane and the third one is the oblique slip fault in which the slip uh, direction of uh, sorry the movement is diagonal that is it is not matching with the strike as well as the dip the, this is like this so if the displacement is along this line that is a strike slip fault if the displacement is along this line then is a dip slip fault if the displacement is not matching with this and it is diagonal then it is called the oblique slip fault is that clear so we had seen the what is the fault and the classification of fault both genetic and geometric if you still have any doubt just feel free and mention in the comment section that i can clear you in the forthcoming videos i uh, created the group for the jam coaching classes if you want to join this group the, the link will be in the description uh, that is both for english as well as tamil there are two groups in the whatsapp and I have created the same video in Tamil. If you want to see, you can check it in my playlist. That the description is also in this, given in this. And I have grouped my videos according to the category. You can go and check in the playlist for the for that thing. If you want to connect with us, these are the links for that. You can mail me or you can. These are the links for that. And you can also support us by like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.